four kingpins are arrested. We're joined by Professor Karat Skakhni. Good afternoon and welcome to the program. Hi, afternoon to yourself and all your listeners. Thank you for joining us. What has changed? How have law enforcement uh, officials managed to get the upper hand currently you know, versing these kidnapping, kidnapping syndicates? We're seeing that a number of them uh, who have been part of these syndicates are being arrested. Yeah, so it seems it must be an intelligence-driven um, um, investigation. I mean, they obviously had information as to where this, for example, Mr. Asmal was staying in Lanasia South and um, hit the house very early in the morning and to, to release him. And that would have been intelligence-driven. Now, whether this comes from previous investigations or the current one that we're working on, they were able to find some leads to follow up on. Um, obviously, they're going to keep very tight-lipped uh, about it, but it is very reassuring to hear that they're making arrests in these types of big high profile cases you know so as, as we always say kidnapping is anything from a once off chance uh, in a drug you know with a drug debt that's owed versus these very high profile complex cases and they didn't really for many years seem to be having many successes with the big sort of cases we saw specifically in the muslim community in south africa for the past few years so it is good um, I do think these organizations though on are, are going to be split up into various cells and various levels so I don't think it's going to stop the industry. I think they will just replace whoever is taken or someone else will step up and take their place. But I do think it's, of course, a very good sign that the SAPS is at least able to identify people, get people released and, and uh, catch um, and hopefully prosecute those that they do arrest. Yes, we've seen huge ransoms being paid over the high profile cases, but also quicker returns for those who trusted law enforcement uh, officials in the process of securing uh, release. Is that a dilemma families have to face, you know, of those of the kidnapped one who have to deal with to pay or not to pay? Well, that's always going to be for every kidnapping case where there's a ransom involved, because, of course, not everyone does have a ransom. Uh, but for these types of cases, with we're, we're kind of been focusing on now, it is. I mean, and and pretty much the, the 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 standard scenario is that if you don't pay, you're not going to get your family member back. And we've seen people for for many many months, up to a year, being kept by these people because they know they target their people, their victims very well. They know who's got the money to pay those massive ransoms that they want. And if it costs them, you know, the investment of keeping these people for five six months in captivity, they know that the payoff is going to well well compensate for that time for that t- time that they've spent. So, you know, yes, you know, we always say that, you know, negotiations with the offender, with the kidnappers, is the way that you 99.9% of the time that you're going to get your family member back. How much you pay, of course, is is open to that negotiation process. They obviously are in every community, prominent, wealthy individuals who now may be feeling that I'm the, potentially the next target uh, of a, ne- a possible next kidnapping. What do people who find themselves in a dilemma like that, what do they do? You know, I I think speak to people who have an understanding of how these types of scenarios play out, how these victims are targeted, and the circumstances under which previous people were taken. Um, And I think that's one of the most important things. You typically find that the people who are kidnapped didn't have any form of close protection security. In other words, what you often refer to as a bodyguard. Um, And that seems to be a pretty effective deterrent in most instances, from allowing kidnappers to decide, well, this would have been a target, but, you know, he's hardened up in the terms of having good security. Maybe we should focus on someone else. So it doesn't stop the process, but it just deters them from a particular target looking for an easier target. It's the same way, you know, for house robbers. They'll look for the easiest house on the block that looks like they can break in with relative ease as opposed to the person that has large guards, dogs, um, you know, good security systems, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, as you've indicated, you know, that uh, this may not be the end as others may, you know, step up to fill that void while the kingpins have been arrested. What would it then take for this entire industry? Could we refer to it as an industry to be closed up and, you know, we uh, it closed this chapter on kidnapping in South Africa? Well, I don't think we're ever going to close this chapter. It's a lucrative industry in the same way you, you have the drug, illicit drug trade is, is a massive industry. The fact that a couple of people, even senior people have been arrested just means somebody else is going to fill the void. So I don't think we'll ever see. I mean, I think it's become it's it's just it's an industry nowadays throughout the world that just took perhaps a bit longer to get to South Africa, maybe for whatever reasons. So it's never going to go away, sadly, because you have people who have money. You have people and other people that know that kidnapping works if they if they choose their targets well. As I said, the police successes can help disrupt it and perhaps make some people think twice about getting into the industry. 
But as I said, it's organized crime. It's it's never going to stop um, in the same way, like I said, when other arrests are made in other organized crime ministries. They just they continue, sadly. But you want to perhaps hopefully have a situation where the police are better at infiltrating these networks, at tracking down the, the, where the victims might be, at following up on the suspects through modern technology means that we can try and catch you know, the, the suspects, but also release the victims as soon as possible, like we saw very successfully with the Asmal case. And of course, good credit to the police for doing that. Thank you very much for chatting to us this afternoon. Your time appreciated. Thanks, Go well. Bye bye. Uh, that was Professor Gerard Laviskakni, who is a clinical psychologist with a particular area of interest in forensic.